but there's a long tradition of these types of uh, uh, voices of conscience. Um, so I just immersed myself in the world of St. Sabina and, and spent time with Father Mike and, and his peacekeepers and the community there and tried to learn as much as I could. We love you on Windy City Live. Yes, we do. Tell us, how did all this ha happen? How did this come about? Well, I play me. I play Val Warner in Chirac, which is really cool. So when people see this movie, they are literally seeing Val, and I am a reporter in the movie. We talk about the violence, but what can we do personally? I think we got to be engaged, and I think engaged in a number of things. In our block, in our home, in our neighborhood, we got to be engaged. We got to fight the issues. We got to fight a government that is abandoned, you know, whole communities on the south and the west side. Um, we got to fight a governor who's cut out every youth employment program who's cut out violence prevention programs, who's abandoned um, our communities and the poor and the vulnerable. And I think we got to reach out to our brothers on the street and love them and respect them and help them, not just demonize them. My participation is only because of Mr. Spike Lee, our leader, our director, and uh, he reached out to me and blessed me with the opportunity to be in this film and said that his mission was to save lives in the south side of Chicago. I'll just say, like, it's first of all, history of coming to Chicago and telling my jokes and telling as a young cat, I'm 37 now. I started about almost 15 years ago. Elroy taking me under the wing, let me do some jokes here and there for the radio stations and all that kind of stuff. We are more than that. We are more than that. We're greater than that. And I feel like in places like this, or Chicago, or whatever you want to call it, the hood, whatever you want to call it, like it's too much attention dwelled on the negative. I learned that no matter what you do and how much of a genuine heart you have and if you're coming from a good place, people are going to criticize if they don't agree with what you're doing. Hi, we're from Empire, and you're watching the Higher Learning Network. So how long have you been standing here? Not too long, like an hour. So this is, we're moving in fast. This is a good time. Yo, what's up? It's your man Tony Schofield from 106.3 Chicago's R&B, and you are watching Men on Higher Learning. Now, I used to hang around with some men that was into some higher learning. It just wasn't that kind of higher learning, but I got myself together now, okay? What is it that you do in your quiet time, in your meditation time, that allows you to bring us the films that you do? I sit courtside in Mass Square Garden, world's most famous arena. Cisco Theater, as you can see it in the background back there. And we are about to experience Chicago Shorts. It's the Black Harvest Film Fest. And uh, our, our own Chicagoan, LaDonna Tittle, your Tittle in the middle, is being awarded the a Legacy Award for her work in contributing to radio television, and specifically The Shy, because the sister been doing it for some years. So stay close. Uh, we'll have some great footage for you. Okay. Tiffany and Vic. This is a good uh, weight lifter. Okay. Uh, uh, a good weapon. And it was very interesting to me. So that's the thing. Hi, I'm entertainment reporter, media personality, Brandy Love, and this question is for the writer director of the college graduate. Can you explain to me more of the significance of the white mask? Because I'm like on the edge of my seat. I need to know. Definitely. 
Um, the significance of the white mask, it came from a book I read in school, it was Franz Fanon's Black Skin, White Mask, and it was kind of the idea behind that expression is, is that to like fit in a white dominated society, black people have to have, you know, they have who they want to be and they have their mask too. If they have their, you know, you code switch between who you are with your black folks and who you are in public and white dominated society. So the white mask was an actual physical manifestation of that, that whenever Hayden, the main character, was struggling with his identity as far as how do I resolve who I want to be and who I have to be, who I feel I have to be in public, whenever he was struggling with that, I physically personified, I physically manifested it through a white mask. Congratulations on a great film. Thank you. Johnson here. Congratulations, first of all. Thank you. Uh, I noticed that you had some shots in Naperville that you filmed. Were they very encouraging to you? Obviously, they don't do a lot of filming in the Naperville area. It's a beautiful town, but I've never seen anything filmed in Naperville. Were they very encouraging to you? Were you optimistic about working with them? Um, I was because I lived there. <laughs> so I told them since I had a library card, I was going to use the library. Um, <laughs> so they were, they, they were um, one of our biggest supporters. Uh, surprisingly enough, because I didn't think they would be um, because of the way Naperville is perceived, I should say. Um, but when I asked, they delivered. It was, I went into the Naperville running store, told them that we were filmmakers, we had no budget. We had a lot of meetings there. Yeah, we did. And right. they right. they were just like, okay, no problem, come on in. Yeah. So they welcomed us and we was like, we put you in the credits. You get credit, you get a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and they welcomed us in. Yeah, so that's how we did that. Hello everyone. Um, I'm Dr. Vines. This is, question is for Tick Films. What was the inspiration behind your film? Inspiration. Um, well, uh, I wrote the script um, some years ago. I met a person, a black person, that told me that they were polyamorous. They were, they were polyamorous. And they were not white. And I always I had a affiliation <laughs> with poly, with a white person and a white man with many women and polygamy and things like that. So I, I, I found it very intriguing and interesting, and I've always tell people, watch what you, the, what was behind it. It was interesting, and I really felt deeply that this is a story that, uh, that that's interesting. I think other people be interested, and the point is to give people a peek at black poly people. They do exist. There is a culture about uh, of, of these people, of the people, I should say <laughs> these people, but there is an interest, there is a culture, and uh, I, I find it fascinating. So that's that was the whole thing about it, behind it, so. Um, I decided to make the main character biracial because I wanted to give, like you were saying, like an additional sort of layer to his sort of struggle with it because, you know, he, as a biracial person, is black and white, so he doesn't really, that's like just an additional kind of difficulty in him resolving his own identity is, is that society perceives him as a black man. But also at the same time, that doesn't mean that, you know, he doesn't have a white mother. Like I'm very close friends with the actor who played the main character. And it's like something that, you know, he and I like talked about. I too, myself am biracial, I'm part Asian. And definitely as far as finding a black identity that I felt comfortable in, that was something up, like mixed status was something that was an additional complication as far as resolving that. Can I just want one question? When did you shoot? When did you shoot your film? When? Um, I shot my film. It was May of last year. May of last year. Yes. The only reason I ask because several locations just a block from my house. <laughs> <laughs> yep, finishing up senior year. <laughs> Does that look familiar? <laughs> Yep. <laughs> right? Block up the street. Okay. Okay. Okay, Sergio. <laughs> All right, my name is Derek Dow, um, um, filmmaker. This question is for Old to Harold Ashley. Now, it's intriguing because your story clearly is, you know, based on your life. 
Um, how did you go about writing the script and being like respectful? Because I know it's kind of you got the mistress in there, and I mean, you know, I know your mom's gonna watch the film, and then you know, you're doing is that real? Is that part real at all? Or how did you go about like being careful how you wrote the script? Thank you, Derek Dow. Uh, <laughs> um, I, so everything in the film happened in real life. Some of it was dramatized, right? To make it more interesting for the screen. Um, so my dad did a, he had a girlfriend that, it wasn't a mistress situation. It was like my parents had broken up. So he had a girlfriend, but to make it um, dramatized for the screen, it was, I sort of took certain liberties um, and exaggerated, like took it over to the top just to make it entertaining and funnier. Um, yeah. You achieved it. <laughs>
Dr. Lico, to the young lady sitting to my left, I thank you for filming some of my goddaughter's part, Pythia Pemberton. Yes. To the young man sitting opposite the white jacket, I'm one of those who marched with Martin Luther King Jr. back in the day, even though I don't look that old. <laughs> so my challenge is, or first my comment is, I think if there's going to be a change, it has to start with young people, and you're young. So why did you feel that it was necessary to take me back to the N-word mm. in your film? The way I wrote it, because I wrote the film, I wrote it in the representative style that like you know, young people talk. It was like, this is vernacular that my friends and I use, and that was the language. Really? Yeah. To this day, huh? Okay. And that was the language that I wrote the film in. I wanted it to be representative of the actual experience. Okay, I have a brilliant question. I just have comments for everybody. Well, the polyamorous, I love that you showed me her with her space and her personality, her wigs, her style. And I was able to open up to her choices. And for Ode to Hero, to me that's like a shadow play. Like everyone likes to pretend that people are good and you know only one way, particularly when they die or you know transition. I love that you showed. You came to a conclusion at the end, but you showed everything, which is a more balanced uh, look to me of how people really are. And then for for your film with the uh, college student, just that code switching and that in your head all the time and questioning your choices and wondering what people are on. That was like brought to life to me with your images and your, mainly with your images. Dialogue, yes, but mainly more so with your images. The historic significance, I didn't even know that. I'm a basketball nut. My mother was at a basketball scholarship to Grambling. We love basketball and I didn't even know that story. So I am just history. You gotta look more into that past. And then yours with the magical children, I mean, I just love that <laughs> because children, our children are magical. You showed them relating to each other and knowing that about themselves and even helping the adults in their lives. And so I, I appreciate that so much. That's not a question, but thank you. I love them all. Thank, thank you. you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Um, two more questions. Siri for the, the mask. Um, I think. Um, the last question was kind of focused on the, well, the song. Why did you choose the song at the end? It seemed like it was a drastic change from the text in the film. And for Training Wheels, the children's acting was excellent. Was, was there a casting? Was there some on-the-go training? I mean, they were like, like, actors from, you know, who have been acting for a long time. So how did you, uh, how were you able to get that type of acting out of the children? Um, thank you for clarifying that for me. I was confused. I was like, I don't think two black people really spoke to each other like that in the film, but bringing it back to the credit song. Um, originally, I think in the first cut of the film that like, I screened just on campus, I think Future's Mask Off was a big song at the time. I had used that as the credits track. It you know, carried some relevancy for this. You know, I'm not clear to use Mask Off, unfortunately. It wasn't really in the budget. So um, I used the music of a classmate of mine at University of Chicago who also makes hip hop music. So that was something that I had access to, something that was cleared, and that's what I put into the film to sort of mm, popularize you know, my peers. Uh, for I training know. wheels. Actually, we're going to have to say that's the, that was the last question. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't have to answer. You want to answer? Okay. 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 Um, so with training wheels, uh, uh, I auditioned 15 girls. Um, and the girl that was actually chosen had no acting experience whatsoever. Um, because she was the most authentic to me 
and that makes that means more to me than just skill because a lot of people can have skill and not be authentic on screen and she was very authentic on screen and she's from Chicago and she's in, she lives in that neighborhood on 43rd so she was familiar with the area and she didn't feel like she was out of place um, and Jojo he lives in LA with his dad and me and his dad are good friends and uh, he's he's always been very animated and <laughs> yeah, he, he has a, a wonderful personality, annoying sometimes, but <laughs> all in all, he's a great kid. Um, and uh, we got him here and uh, he was he was my toughest actor because he had moments where it was just like, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to go back to L.A. And I was just like, you know, I had to take a deep breath. Like, oh, OK, so let's get through this. But uh but no, they're they're on their on their own. They're very talented kids, and it didn't take a lot to get them to do what I wanted. Um, just more so de dealing with their temperament, just them not wanting to do it over again and not wanting to be there at that moment. That was like the hardest part. But um, all in all, like they really have raw talent, and it just takes someone to come and steer it in a certain direction for them to really shine. So yeah. <laughs> Uh, please continue to support Black Harvest this year and next. We appreciate your support. Have a good evening. The Gene Sisko um, Film Center Legacy Award, and it's really heavy. And uh, I tell you, oh, that's, you know, you know those, those videos go fast. <laughs> this is a good uh, weight lifter. Okay. <laughs> A good it's weapon. Yeah. <laughs> this is our academy, you know. My that's right, you know? that's right, that's right. All the things I didn't say, I'm saying now. <laughs> All the people I forgot to say, I'm saying there now. You go. There you my go. My family, my neighbors. My there friends. you go. Thank you very much. Thank you. One of their faces is This was great. This was great. Which, which short did you enjoy most? Uh, Royal basketball and the kids training wheels. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you much. We appreciate you. Is Monday morning a struggle to get out of bed, into the swing of things? Well, don't worry, you are not alone. Join us for thought-provoking, stimulating, and mindful conversations on higher learning with Zelda Speaks for your Monday morning mindfulness session on Blog Talk Radio, The Female Solution, Mondays, 7.30 until 9 a.m. Be sure and send your ideas, thoughts, comments, and suggestions. Experience mindfulness moments with the mindfulness slash Stress Relief Coach, Zelda Speaks. And thanks for sharing the Mindfulness Moment Tip of the Day. Stay on purpose, stay empowered, and stay tuned to your next session of Mindfulness on Higher Learning with Zelda Speaks. Make it a mindful day. And thanks for listening. Hi, my name is Julie Myrista. I'm with the American Heart Association. And we have been up to our ears in sweetened beverage tax, so I so much appreciated the five minute meditation today that allowed me to get back to my center, take a few deep breaths, and really focus on what's important. Shalom and good God morning. And thank you for joining me today on blogtalkradio.com, The Female Solution. 
It's your Monday morning mindfulness with Zelda Speaks. Mindfulness Stress Release Coach. I'm just here to make your day better. Hey, this is Bill Walsh with the Power Team Success TV Network. I am so honored that I have an amazing speaker, a gifted author, that Lily is taking the world by storm with her message. Zelda Robinson, how are you? I'm wonderful. Gosh, we're so honored to have you on the show. So maybe you could share with some of the promoters around the country and individuals who are thinking about booking you to speak. Just a bit of your background would be great. Well, I worked 20 years in radio. I retired from radio. But that radio career turned into motivational speaking. Yep. And as a result of that, I got into television. But there was always something in the back of my mind. You've got a message. You need to go back and share that. So I started back, and this is the place to be with the International Power Team so that I can get my message across. And so when you do speak at a lot of events, right, what are a few of your main speaking topics that you like to share with audiences? Well, the main topics I like to share are for entrepreneurs and for business owners who have a daily struggle of thoughts coming into their head about what they can and cannot do. I have a a mindfulness training program, a system that will help you get to where you need to be. And I'm sure a lot of entrepreneurs face that. Oh, I'm sure a lot of small business go through that challenge. And of course, if you're listening today and you're looking for a great speaker of book, she owns this space, she lives in it every day, and she's helping a lot of individuals have that big breakthrough. So what would you say when you do and you go speak at these events, what would you say is the one big takeaway the audience walks away with? If there was like an aha moment that they would have that they'd say, oh my gosh, I, I learned so much from it. This is one of the big things that I learned. Well, one of the, the greatest gifts that I have is mindfulness, and it's learning how the brain functions so that you don't beat up on yourself, all those negative thoughts that you have. You learn how the brain functions and how to not cover up, but replace those negative thoughts with positive thoughts, and there's a whole process. It's a system. That's pretty awesome. I know you travel around, but you're willing to speak globally, whether it's local, national, regional, it doesn't matter. You're there. Uh, I know you're excited about getting that message out there. What is the best way for promoters watching this video today or someone's watching the video that they could get some more information about you? Just look at the website at the bottom of the screen. That's how you can contact me. That's awesome. And all you got to do, once again, if you're looking for a great speaker, she's definitely the one. You'll love her at your event. And I can tell you that I'm excited to see you change even more lives. Thank you so Congratulations. Much. Thanks for being on the Power Team Success TV Network. Good morning. I have to tell you that I'm so excited to be here. This has been a week where I have been under a lot of stress just with my to-do list so long and my schedule is so full. And the meditation this morning was just wonderful. I could feel the Spirit of God all through this facility. And Sister Zelda, you are just a gift to this community. I want to thank you for this meditation this morning. I feel like I can just walk out of here and take on the rest of this week. And I thank God for you. I thank God for this organization and all the work you're doing for all of us out here working on behalf of our community. God bless you.